you are updating, this is one big marketplace. You are both a supplier in that marketplace and you're also a consumer. Yeah, that's dreamy. And it's the observation that led William Nicholson to write The Romantic Economist, a story of love and market forces. Before you go thinking that bringing economics to bear on love sounds academic or disengaged or cold-hearted, Actually, it's all those things, so buckle up. And number one, differentiate your product, then restrict supply. See, the key is not to restrict supply too early. Because you are exactly the same as everyone else at that point. Without differentiating yourself by showing what a great person you are, restricting supply won't work. But the minute you're certain you've demonstrated how awesome you really are, make yourself scarce. Then it's about making yourself into the luxury good. Luxury good like a nice watch. Better than a Casio, but not so expensive that you have no buyers. And do you really think you're a Rolex? Come on. Economics also informs how you should approach the end of a relationship. Specifically, ignore sunk costs and focus on opportunity costs. It's not like you can suddenly get back the three hours you spent on that nice walk in the park. That time has gone. It's a sunk cost. You need to think about your future. What are you going to be missing out on if you stay together? Okay, yeah, that last one was kind of a bummer. So let's end on a romantic note. Namely, sacrifice liquidity for higher returns. Think of the relationship like a bond. The longer you tie up your money in these bonds, the better the rate of return is. Although you lose your liquidity, your ability to withdraw that cash, you are rewarded for that with better rates of interest. So there you have it, an economic take on love. Invest at your own risk, and individual results may vary.